Explain the procedure to design a cast iron pulley. Cast iron pulley of a flat belt drive system consists of a rim, hub, and a number of arms, where rim carries the belt. Hub connects the pulley to the shaft, and arms connect the rim to the hub. During the transmission of power through the belt drive, we see that the elements of pulley get subjected to torque and bending moment. As a result, stresses get induced in these elements. Therefore, it is essential to design these elements in such a way that they are strong enough to withstand the stresses induced. Schematic diagram of the cast iron pulley and its preferred nomenclature is as follows. Now, let's understand the basic procedure to design a cast iron pulley. Designing a cast iron pulley involves the designing of rim, arms and hub. We will use machine design data book to design these elements. Let's first design the rim. For this we have to determine the following. Let's first determine the diameter of the rim. Diameter of the rim is same as the diameter of the pulley obtained while designing a flat belt. It can also be determined by using the following expression for centrifugal stress. Where Let's now determine the width of the rim. Note that width of the rim should always be greater than the width of the belt. Standard width of the rim of the pulley can be determined by referring the design data book. Let's now determine the thickness of the rim. Thickness of the rim can be determined by using the following expressions. And now let us determine the crown height. Convex shape of the rim is called the crown. It helps to hold the belt on the pulley in the running condition. Crown height corresponding to the pulley diameter can be obtained by referring the design data book. From the design data book, pulley diameter 40 mm to 355 mm. For pulley diameter 400 mm to 2000 mm. Let's now design the arms. For this, we have to determine the following. Let's first determine the number of arms. Referring the design data book, number of arms will be 4 for a pulley diameter of up to 450 mm and 6 for a pulley diameter greater than 450 mm. Let's now determine the length and taper of the arms. Length of the arm can be determined by using the following expression. Note that arms of the pulley are tapered from the hub to the rim. Its value is taken as 4 mm per 100 mm from the hub to rim. Let's now determine the radius R1 and R2. Note that arms are joined to the rim in the form of curves. Radius of these curves can be determined by using the following expressions. Let's now determine the cross section of the arm. Cross section of the arm is taken as an elliptical with the major axis lying on the plane of rotation. Cross section of the arm is determined by considering it as a cantilever beam fixed at the hub end and subjected to a point load at the rim end. Length of this cantilever beam is assumed to be equal to the radius of the rim. It is also assumed that at a time only one half of the arm carry the load. Now tangential force acting at the end of each arm is given by. Therefore, bending moment acting on the arm will be. Section modulus of an elliptical cross section is given by. Therefore, bending stress developed on the arm will be. Now, cross sectional dimension of the arm can be determined by comparing the bending stress developed with the permissible bending stress for the arm material. And now, let us design the hub. For this, we have to determine its diameter and length. Diameter of the hub is given in terms of shaft diameter. Note that the value of hub diameter should not exceed 2D. And length of the hub can be determined by using the following expression. Note that length of the hub should not be less than. Thus we can summarize as.